here we are up on the left. Take a little look at it. Everything seems to be pretty solid. Not a lot of rust, which is certainly nice. Nice to see. We have a cross member here that I believe would have held like a carrier bearing for the rear drive shaft for a two piece rear shaft. So we'll likely be getting rid of that. We do have some symmetry in the bump outs there, which is good. I thought that maybe with the transfer case feeding this passenger drop axle that we would only have a bump out on the one side, but it looks like there's some symmetry there. Not sure if we're going to have to cut the floor, but that's interesting. There's some torsion bar mounts here that we'll have to get rid of. I may be able to unbolt up front here before we cut the frame. So I think we're going to be cutting the frame right in this area. So I'm going to clean that area up and mark it, get rid of these fuel lines as well, uh, going towards the rear. It's funny, these chassis have this big area that goes up right here, which is a little bit weird. There's no real need for that space, but it does go up there a bunch. But that allows us the room to be able to run a four link in that area. So it's at least bringing the rear. Fuel tank is out back. Um, all this stuff, of course, is going to leave. The fuel tank might be able to keep. It doesn't seem like it affects departure too much back here. So we'll probably keep that. Maybe make a little bit beefier skid plate for it or something. Yeah, but I mean, body's pretty good. I'm pleased. So I guess we'll get, get right into it and start moving the stuff out of the front here so we can get a nice clean cut. Get rid of all the fuel lines and the brake lines and stuff that we're running back. Over here, I unbolted the torsion bars there. So, I believe we're ready to go. Put some jack stands underneath here so it won't fall down too far. We'll get to cut.
across the axle, found the center line, measured across the vehicle, found the center line. And now I'm just trying to get the axle centered with the chassis so we can see what we have for clearance. So right now, whoop, lined up pretty good. As the vehicle moves up and down as the suspension cycles, you're gonna have a little bit of side to side motion of the axle due to the track bar. So it doesn't have to be perfect here. That is gonna be adjustable in the final um, suspension design. But what we're worried about here is this pinion and that frame rail. If you look coming forward here, you can see from that body mount, the frame comes inward some. Looks like we're gonna have to cut the frame a little bit further back to give us room for a drive shaft. Now, given the offset with the with this differential, I think the transfer case is going to have a drive shaft coming a little bit of an angle from the, you know more from the center out to this differential. But that being said, we're still going to want to have clearance. So I think we're going to be ending up cutting this frame a little bit further back for clearance. Next thing we're going to do is lower this down and see just how low we can get and still be able to turn the tires for clearance at full bump. So as we're looking here, you'll see that the body line there is maybe three inches higher because the fender well opening is not large enough for this tire. And that's okay. We plan on making that moving that forward to the front here as well as moving that up and retaining that kind of factory look. So I'm not concerned about three inches. I think we have room to go three inches up without without making the fender look terrible. So that's okay. The concern that we're getting at this ride height or full bump is that pinion is pointed right into the floor right here. better look there yeah so there's really not a ton we can do I mean I can cut into the floor there for clearance but I think this is pretty much as low as we're gonna be able to get which I'm, I'm fine with because it's basically at stock ride height pretty much level right now so that's okay essentially would the suspension travel set up the way that I want to have it we'll have seven inches of up travel, seven inches of down travel, so the vehicle would sit about seven inches up from where we currently are. So just imagine a, a trooper with a seven inch lift. Not crazy. Um, the next concern, of course, is that frame rail. It does kind of scooch by there, so I think if we cut it back maybe five, six inches, and then go straight forward with it, we'll be able to get it to go over this part of the pumpkin instead of the, the taller section. And then of course on the other side it doesn't really matter. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's looking pretty good. The next question is whether or not the motor has room to fit in that, in that kind of bell housing transmission tunnel area there. Not sure if we're gonna have enough space there, but we're gonna have to mock that up next. An interesting thing happened when I went to pick this up on the lift. You see here all the weight that I cut off the front made it so that it's super rear heavy. I just picked up the front of the vehicle. So what I did was lower down and fill the interior with the old wheels and tires as far forward as I could fit them just to try to get some of that weight over the front end so it wouldn't tip backwards when I put it up on the lift. Okay, coming back here we have these torsion bar mounts. We no longer need those, so I'm gonna cut those off the frame and then get some of this other kind of bracketry bits and bobs. That was, I don't know, that was a little heat shield or something. We'll get that out of there, clean this frame up.
the cleaned up section. Here's what's left on the driver's side. We're gonna get rid of this next. So the tractor wouldn't start and I had to use the lift to pick the engine up off the roll around and then reorient it so it would be high enough and far forward enough so it would clear the axle when I tried to roll it up there and I could mock everything up all at once and lower the body down on the engine with the axle in place. So kind of use the lift to pick it up there, move the axle into place, push the engine and transmission forward then lower the chassis down on top of it. Unexpected uh, issue. I was going to just lower this down. I didn't take into account that the lift arm would run out of travel before we'd reach all the way down. So, I'm gonna have to figure something out here. So, I picked the chassis up, put some jack stands underneath it and then relocated the lift arms so they would clear and then I could set it all the way back. Transmission, front axle, everything's roughly in place, mocked up, kind of where it needs to be. Um, right now, the vehicle is sitting at the minimum height that it could ever be. We call that full bump. So, there's a, there's a couple reasons why this is as low as we can go. If it was one reason, we'd try to change it. So, the front axle is touching the engine oil pan. Can't really go much further than that. The pinion on that side basically is so high up that the drive shaft would have to go through the floor if we went any further up. And I don't want to sacrifice my, my foot room just for a little bit lower center of gravity. It's already going to be pretty low. Um, so th those two reasons, along with the fact that you know these tires are pretty well filling this out, basically mean that this is as far up as we're going to go. Um, the way I'm setting up the suspension on this is we're going to go up 7 inches from here and that'll allow the 14 inch travel shocks to go 7 inches either direction from ride height. So at ride height, which is 7 inches higher, it's not quite 7, 7 there, um, we will be able to hit a bump and have the suspension compress 7 inches, go off of a cliff, have the suspension drop off 7 inches. So that's, that's a lot of suspension travel. Most factory vehicles are not even half that. So we're going to have a lot of motion in here. I just want to make sure that we're able to control that and that it's not going to smash into stuff if you go over a big enough bump. So this is, this is our baseline. Uh, next time, we're going to be designing frame rails around these pieces as they're mocked up. 
And once those frame rails are in place, it allows us to fine tune things, move, move stuff around a little bit to put things exactly where they need to be. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this and follow along for the next one.